Let's do our walk around on the pie. You can see the pins on the pie. This is pin 2, this is the 5 volt. This is pin 9, it's a ground. I also use pin 6 sometimes. Uh, this is pin 13, so this is our input back from the, from the meter. It's the yellow wire. I use the same color coding as the, as the meter uses the red, black, yellow. And then we follow our wires over here to our voltage divider. This is the wire that goes back to the pi pin 13. This wire goes over to the plug on the meter. And this is the ground. And you can see our two resistors. I'll put a diagram at the end and label everything nicely. There's our plug. So red goes to red, yellow in the middle, black. That all checks. There's our meter. You can see the impeller inside there. This is another version of the software for the YFS201 flow meter. And again, this one uses polling. Uh, this one also checks for stopped flow. There's just a few subtle differences. This loops on time, not on inputs. My other polling version, my other advanced polling version, it loops on inputs so this one waits for a certain amount of time to to happen and then reports the other version reports based on the number of revolutions when the impeller is turning this one again is uh, on pin 13 pin 6 is ground again you can use any ground I think some of my diagrams I show pin 9 or something like that uh, 5 volt VCC pin to RPI pin 2 you cannot put the 5 volts back into the pie without going through a voltage divider or you will burn up your pie. That's this note. Uh, here's a note to me about the voltage divider. I'll put that uh, diagram back there. This is an approximate. All of these things are approximate because the impeller pulses are not always exact. We import the GPIO library. We import time and sys. We're going to set mode to GPIO board. We're going to use the board numbering. Uh, input is on pin 13, and here we set pin 13 to input. We're going to use these variables. Rate count is zero, so this is the total number of liters per minute. This is the total uh, liters uh, minutes. This is the constant. This is the pulses to liters conversion, if you will. Uh, based on your testing, this is just a very rough number. I've tried different numbers in different programs. Uh, you'll see this change in the various programs, but this really needs to be calibrated based on your situation. Uh, the new time, the stop time, and the GPIO last condition. Just setting those to initial states. This prints out a header. When we start the program, it'll print out water flow approximate and then control C to exit. The control C to exit is okay. Uh, I'll tell you about that in a second. It's not as smooth as I would like. Here is the infinite loop. It goes down a little bit farther. Down to here, down pretty much to the end of the program. But we'll look at that in a second. This is our uh, second multiplier and I've cheated a little bit to make the program run faster so that when we do the demo we can see what's happening but if you wanted to make it one minute I would change this value to 20 and then I would get one minute because down here I have a three second loop um, I'm incrementing this to three seconds for my stop flow so you set this number to whatever you want you can set it for two minute output or whatever but again, I'm doing this because in the video, we don't want to sit here for a minute between reports. Uh, we're going to grab the new time. The new time is the current time plus three seconds. Um, the rate count equals zero. And we're just resetting that back to zero. And then we're going to say, while well, the current time is less than the new time, and we set the new time up here. So in other words, in three seconds is what I'm saying. GPIO current, we're going to grab the current condition, which is the input on pin 13. If the GPIO current is not equal to the last condition, in other words, the impeller is not stopped, 
That's what we're looking for. We're going to increment the rate count by one and the total count by one. Otherwise, we're just going to leave them the same. Do you really need to do this? No, but I just wanted to do it for smooth timing. I wanted to make sure that if it goes through this loop and this loop, it has roughly the same timing. Down here, what this is for, this bit of code right here is for a nice exit and it's also for debugging so when I activate this statement when I remove the hashtag it'll print a 1 or a 0 depending on the status of pin 13. When this is active, when this statement is active the control C works very beautifully it takes you out of the program gives you a nice message shuts everything down beautifully but usually I don't like to have this thing on and when it's not on and you do a control C it just smashes the program to a stop so that's why uh, you can kind of omit all of this if you don't care about beautiful exit you only you can stop right there uh, okay where was I so we're going to repeat this part of the loop for the timing and when we reach our time then we'll go down we'll fall through we'll increment the meters minutes rather uh, we'll print out our information and then we'll go back up here and we'll repeat the whole thing again and we'll do that forever. So let's run it and see what it does. You can see that it's giving us an output based on every few seconds. Um, and again, I did this, normally you would do this maybe a, a minute or five minutes, I mean, in an actual use, but we don't want to sit here in the video and watch this for hours to get a few samples. I'm going to blow air through the meter. Uh, my wife won't let me use water in the TV room for obvious reasons. So here you can see that the, the liters per minute rate, and this is an approximate, this is an estimate, has jumped up, and of course the total liters in the first matches that. Uh, you can see that it's gone down because it went up and then it's going down now because I stopped blowing in it. You can see here that the impeller has stopped and that the total liters is not increasing which is what it should be. Uh, the earlier programs, uh, the very simple versions of this, if the impeller gets stuck in a one condition it will start giving false readings. This one will not So you can see, okay, so the water stopped flowing, now the water's flowing again, it starts updating again, the, the water is slowing down and stopping, and so this is working as we think it should work. Okay, well that was pretty much it for this advanced version, uh, time-driven version using polling. I hope you found it useful and interesting in your Raspberry Pi experimentation.